Hi and welcome to my second video about how to make espadrille. I made my pair of espadrille lined. A lot of store-bought ones are not lined, which means your foot is directly on the braided sole. But I thought it felt a little scratchy, and uh, so I decided to make a luxuriously lined pair. To learn how to make the soles, watch my video Making Shoe Soles Part 5, and everything is explained there. When you make the second sole, though, make sure you go and measure the first loop that you used on the first sole and make it exactly the same length and also count how many rounds because as you see in the picture it's going to look wider at first before you stitch it all together. As for materials, you really don't need anything that special. You see everything you need in this picture. You need more fabric than what you see in the picture um, and you also need a really good glue, one that stays elastic when it's dry. And I'm pretty sure you'll have everything else at home already. So, take one of your soles and step on it. I'm using a styrofoam foot, it's easier for filming. Place a piece of paper exactly where you want your espadrille to be, not too high, and smooth it over your toes. Then mark where that piece of paper meets the sole. Not where it meets the floor, but where it meets the sole. Mark it with dots, then connect the dots and uh, fold the paper in half, cut it out so we get a symmetrical piece because um, we're going to be making shoes where the left and the right foot are going to be the same, right? So make some corrections um, and mark the center with notches. Then you're going to do exactly the same for the back pattern piece. I have folded my piece of paper in half and you're holding the front pattern piece exactly where you're going to want it to be. You're marking everything where the sole meet and the paper meet and where the front piece and the back piece meet and where the heel should be and how high up you want it. And the pattern pieces will look approximately like this. Now cut these two pieces out in a muslin fabric or any fabric you really want um, or that you have plenty of, but this is not going to be your real shoes. This is a trial shoe. And uh, you'll also need the sole. As you can see, this is the stitched up version. It's not going to look that great. I folded over the edges and everything. But uh, I tried it on and I decided I needed to take off just a little bit something from the back uh, at the heel because it was too loose and it was going to slide off my foot. But uh, yeah, you do that. You step into it and you make sure it fits you well and is comfortable. And then you transfer whatever changes you want onto your paper pattern and you draw it up again nicely like I did here. And this is going to be the pattern you're going to actually use. Now cut out your pattern pieces from the actual material. You will need the front pattern piece twice in your lining material at the seam allowances and twice in your outer fabric also, of course, adding the seam allowance and be very precise cutting these things out. And then you will need the back pattern piece four times in the lining material and four times in the outside material that you're going to be using. And you will also need the sole, but you'll need that only twice. Now you're placing a lining front piece and an outer front piece right sides together. And you're pinning them together exactly from one notch to the other notch where the back pattern piece is going to meet the front pattern piece. You have to be very precise and use a back stitch to secure the seam beginning and the seam end. Next you're going to be sewing together the back pattern piece and the front pattern piece, putting right sides together and you're sewing exactly to that point. Make sure you don't catch any of the lining fabric at all. And make sure you know what's top and what's bottom. And you do the same thing for the lining, right sides together and sewing exactly to that point without catching the outer fabric. And you also sew together the heel, you can do that before or after. And it looks something like this. Now fold your shoe inside out again so that the right sides are together. And you are going to be now sewing together the back pattern piece. Make sure you iron the seam allowances apart though before you do that. And this is what we're at now. So next, we I've put a little elastic into my heel. This is not absolutely necessary that you do that. I just wanted to make sure that it's not going to slide off my heel. I used a little bit of tension, not too much, 
and a small zigzag stitch to secure the elastic on both ends. Next I edge stitched that top of the shoe the, on the two back pieces and I pinned the lining to the sole so that the seam allowances are on the outside of the shoe. You might have to snip in a little bit so that the lining lies flat on the sole. And you can make a very smooth seam, which looks like this. Next, I took an insole that I had made myself. It's made from two pieces of uh, fabric and uh, bias tape is sewn around it. I also took a store-bought insole, which is very soft, and I glued that together. You don't need all of that, I just felt like making very soft uh, espadrilles, I might as well. So I placed the lining of the fabric shoe onto that insole that I just made, folding the seam allowances under, as you see, and I marked with green dots um, just to make sure that I'm gonna space out everything right before I start sewing. And then you sew those two things together um, you catch a good part of the insole, but very little through the seam from the sole to the, to the lining fabric because you will actually see those mini stitches on the inside of your shoe. So you want to make sure that those are very, very small and you only catch a tiny little bit. Now again, theoretically you wouldn't have to do all the insoles, you could just already attach this now to your braided sole, but uh, I'll show you how I did it. So next I applied glue to only the seam allowance of my outer fabric, the inside of the seam allowance of my outer fabric. I folded that over. Work precisely and only fold under the seam allowance. And you'll have to make little folds around the heel and around the toe, but they're not going to be visible. So now you have a finished outer shoe, which only needs to be attached to the braided sole. Apply glue, usually you have to let it dry till it's dry to the touch and put them together. Next you're sewing the sole and the outer shoe together. As you see I'm using a blanket stitch, I'm going through the braided sole and I'm taking just a little bit of the outer fabric on the, on the shoe. It's a blanket stitch, I'm showing you slowly how it goes. I went all the way around. Theoretically maybe you can combine this step with what I later did in the embellishing blue yarn. But somehow my braids are pretty hard and I would have had a, a difficult time making this stitch even. So this is just to attach the two things together. And later I did the embellishing stitch. When it got too hard because of the glue and the needle got stuck, I just used uh, needle nose pliers to get the needle through. And all you have left to do, finally, is really just the embellishment. I used a blue yarn, and again I went all the way around doing a blanket stitch. I also used the blanket stitch for the toe cap to make it look a little more professional and cover up any little folds you might have there. I marked guidelines with Taylor's chalk, that's very important, so it gets even. And like you see, just used my good old blanket stitch again. And then I also went all the way around the edge again. Now as you see, because I've already attached the sole to the fabric shoe, I only had to go through the thread and not through the braided sole, which made it a lot easier to be precise. So stitches came out pretty even, it's a nice embellishment. And on the inside that's what it looks like. Because it was pretty slippery on my hardwood floor, and also because I want the braided sole to last a bit longer, I decided to attach some rubber soling. I bought it online, but uh, your local shoemaker would probably be able to sell you some of that stuff too. Apply glue where needed. I decided not to do the whole sole. Wait till it's dry to the touch again. And use a hammer to put everything together. And this is it. You're done with your first pair of espadrilles. They are super comfortable, padded nicely, and I think they're going to last for a long time.